tired of screwing up, I'm tired of going down, I'm tired of myself, I'm tired of this town. Alright boys, been driving Kerrykins around, just didn't want to be on the camera, don't blame her, she ain't looking all that great. So she thinks, I think she looks beautiful. Oh, that's and, very nice of you. Uh, Appreciate all the get well soon messages, Guys, I plan on it. Yeah, you plan on getting, <laughs> getting well soon. Tell you what, you guys are absolute legends, I can't believe it. Got me, uh, played at the old art strings that, because yeah. like how many people, um, commented in it was just amazing wasn't it, it? Was. absolutely amazing and it perked carry up big time yeah. but we're here we're fishing boys and we're fishing for a sturgeon now I know what you boys are thinking right you're thinking no there's no chance in hell that Chris and Kerry are gonna catch a sturgeon on the river Tamar under the Tamar bridge because that's where we are at the minute but I assure you boys I assure you that it's possible and I do want to know why it's possible. Here, yeah, look. I'll get you a close up shot of this. But uh, see that bloke right there? See him? Oh, doesn't he look like me? Doesn't he look like me? And that's a white sturgeon. I'll show you properly in a minute. But that is my great great granddad. He caught a sturgeon out of Plymouth, boys. Come on. It's doable. I'm going to be doing sturgeon quest and everything. Do you know where he called it? It's in his fishing bible that he gave to me. <laughs> he he oh, went right. down through the generations. I know exactly where he caught it. <laughs> Food for thought though, boys, all right? People get snapped off by these big congers in the river mm. and they go, big conger. It was too big, it was huge, it just snapped me. Just pulled the rod right over, snap, snap the line. What do you reckon? Food for thought. And not only did he catch this out of Plymouth, the story goes that he called it, gave it to the Queen. He gave it to the Queen and Queenie ate it and had some caviar, I think, or something like that. So he gave it to the Queen and he got a little letter back off of her. The sturgeon landed at Plymouth today. And then in today's markets, this is what it used to give you back in the day, because this is from the archives, it used to give you um, Plymouth fish. Two steamers landed short sub short supplies which made fair price by rail 250 fillets cod five stone of cod and 120 cases of mixed fish but you think guys you think about what was uh swimming around i've got a few marine biologist friends maria and niall and all that and maria 
um, she told me in some of the old archives, which I've got to look up as well, running up the river, we used to have angel shark. Um, and I think they found one breeding pair up in Wales, undisclosed location. So guys, when I'm talking about angel sharks, I'm talking about monkfish. And just quickly, I'm also talking about when they found a pair, they found an inshore breeding pair. This is what I'm talking about. So, you know, I know you can still get them out at sea and stuff, monkfish, but, um, yeah, I'm talking about inshore breeding pairs of monkfish, otherwise known as angel sharks. Lovely. These species were running up. They were running up back in the day, you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll show you another bit of information I've got as well in a minute about dates and stuff. Although, yeah, it was a very rare catch back then because he did give it to the queen. Look how big it is. He looks, that man, looks like a fairly hefty sized man so that sturgeon is the same length of him that's a six foot sturgeon so well, i would have loved to have met him i've heard some really crazy stories of some really crazy good fishermen like roger i don't want dear roger dear old roger there's stuff swimming around that we still don't know about and that's what gets me excited so my great 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 granddad bearing in mind that my great great granddad was a fish vendor rank or profession he was a fish vendor too he was a fish vendor this is a death certificate i think births and deaths yeah and he lived in 1872 in 32 new street i don't know if anybody knows the history of plymouth or anything but 32 new street is down on the barbican the old cobble street in behind I think they've got like a tattoo place behind there now and uh indian restaurant and stuff but it's really tucked back that's one of my favorite streets in Plymouth. I love that street because it's got so much history about it. But this year, they're opening 32 New Street up to the public and they're gonna have loads of stuff in there, just uh, historian stuff, because that, that just takes back so long, you know, like early 1800s. So I can't wait to go into my great, great, great granddad's house and have a little look around. <laughs> Hopefully he's the Earl of Earl of the Barbican or something. I can take all the rights and all the fishing rights. <laughs> I think when you're born, I think more stuff gets passed on and ingrained in your head than what you think, you know. Before I even knew any of this, that was my favourite street in Plymouth. I remember I used to live up on the hoe and I used to just walk down there, you know, with all the mist coming in and I used to like going over the cobbled streets and all. it was amazing. Oh, there was two things. Two years back, I'm down Mount Wise, right? And this is before I knew about this sturgeon or anything. And I'm looking down. Guys, I'm being dead serious here. I'm looking down. I've got my headlamp on the water. And right in on the wall, I see something that is... Not monstrous, but I'd say about four and a half, five foot. Tide was up. I could see it clearly. It was white, right? I've seen bass. I've seen big bass. I've seen mullet. It wasn't no mullet and it wasn't no bass. What was it? Kev was telling me a smoothie was caught right up river once. And it did have the it did have the shape of something different that I've never seen. And it wasn't a bass and it wasn't a mullet on top. And it was four and a half foot and it was white. And it was running along. And I just followed it all the way along, Mount Wise. What was it? What was it? There's things we don't know about bass. Also, Kerry, do you remember when we were down Mount Wise, down King Billy, and we were there, and all that pod of dolphins were shoaling the yeah. mackerel up? There was about six of them, and we seen a little juvenile oh, one things. come right in under the lights, right up river. You know what I mean? You got good depth there. And I mean, if they're shoaling stuff up, you know, big six, seven, eight foot porpoises and bigger, if they're coming in that close, shoaling mackerels up, what else? Three o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Three o'clock in the morning, we were there and we just sat there and just watched these dolphins right in front of us and they held there for a good 45 minutes just chomping on these mackerel. What else is chasing mackerel up a river and shoaling them up? You know what I mean? If a big porpoise can do that, um, you know, this, we've still got different species of sharks and stuff. I think a blue shark might come in, you know what I mean? Like where the where the Brittany Ferry comes in and the naval ships, there is a there is a route through with good depth there. They say with the blue sharks you need to be in like 150 foot of water. Or is it I think it's like over 80. Over 50 or 80. If you're over that you're alright, you'll get them. But 
And on a last note, although the fishing, you know, would have been better back in the day, you know, it would have been thriving and all that, just think, at least you're lucky enough to be alive now because we can still catch some monsters. I don't know, another 50 or 60 years from now, you imagine what it's gonna be like. I reckon my great-great-grandson is gonna be holding up a PB two pound dogfish yeah. and doing it not. Going, look at the size of this doggy. Specimen hunter for doggies and pout. <laughs> That's what I reckon. I can just imagine it. And he'll be looking at all my old YouTube archived footage and going, not only was he a nutter, but look at all those good fish he was catching, you know? So yeah, get out, it it hard and I'll be trying for my sturgeon. And I'm gonna show you my crazy setup one day as well that I'm thinking about using down Mount Wise. I'm absolutely mental. All the local lads will be looking at me going, what the bloody hell is he doing? But I've waffled enough and I'll see you at the next one. I love Kerry very much. Oh, and, uh, that's sweet. That's sweet. I'm a romantic at all. And somebody said I was like super casual. Uh, when I was doing the filming, you know, you've just had like art surgery and all that, but if you're casual, what else are you? You know what I mean? I don't want to be a nervous wreck, you just got to go with the flow, and uh, we'll get there with it, will we? Lovely, guys. See you later.